It's just another way to, to make your stuff and, and it helps you to, to perform different, in a different way, no? in, to find different structures because your, your brain is thinking differently. Weird, so um, I was kind of aware of live coding for like a really long time, from like 2007 more or less, but I never did it because I was always like, I can't do live coding, I'm not a good enough coder. Like, I just don't, like, I sort of had this vision of live coders as like super virtuosic. Before we were more experimenting with uh, controllers, like Wiimotes were a big thing back then to like just use these Nintendo game controllers to control some sounds. We really loved this like um, simplicity of being the computer music performer just with the laptop without any additional MIDI controller and gadgets and everything. Like we had the feeling it is like uh, how computer music should actually also be a bit like really getting down to the core of what makes a computer a computer like expressing writing algorithms or expressing um, process as code and uh, yeah we wanted to experiment with that and we wanted to see also how far we could uh, push it in a sense. Well to me like you know thinking about like how can how can the laptop be considered an instrument eh? because of course like if you try to study in a conservatory of music you will always be asked like okay what's your musical background what do you play Uh, and if you say, like, I play the laptop, no one will understand that. And, you know, the way electronic music has evolved, so if you just think of the laptop, you, you will have, like, music software to play with, and sometimes you have interfaces to control the software. But to me, with live coding, it was really the way to actually use the laptop without any peripherals to, you know, convert it or be used as an instrument. To me, an important part is um, showing your process. So, I, and other people might disagree with this, I think, but for me, showing your process and sharing your process with other people is a very core part of it. And so that's why I think I sometimes find community with people working with modular synths or something because of the Um, kind of like showing your process live to other people. And I think that um, affects not just how a live performance happens, but also uh, this sort of community building of teaching other people and sharing what you're doing with other people. And live coding, I think it's about trying new things, trying new possibilities. And of course, if you do that, it might crash at some point because this is a machine, because this is experimental, because this is new and it's great. And it's just, well, let's put it back, no? Let's, let's recover from the crash. So no, it's not only the crash, it's like how you recover from the crash. When we share the code in live coding, we are not just sharing some texts and stuff, but we are also sharing our, our, our thoughts in a way. So I'm, I'm sharing more than us than, than in other practices maybe. So I think when we, when we share that much, we create this community and the, this way to do things and, and to think about things also. So I think that's the, the, the main thing with the life coding was because like because the live coding community cared about diversity we ended up on like every lineup in the UK for a while and we were just like we do not have time to be on every lineup like we need more women to like support a like diverse diverse scene and mm. so I guess yeah that's one one aspect of time but yeah no it, it can be really hard I think um, to deal with those issues but um, I guess like the on the money front like almost I mean, all live coding software is open source. I mean, but I mean, I think like the live coding community kind of evolved out of like ideas around open source software and transparency and making things free and open. So yeah, that's all sort of been inherited 
um, from open source aesthetic essentially and brought into the scene. F things f shifted also much more into like uh, the community aspects and that it is more about uh, doing it and sharing uh, sharing the knowledge and the, the joy of life coding um, with each other. We thought like we just need to start coming together, you know, and start sharing our ideas and, and you know, become more of a community than just art, art, independent artists that sometimes get together and you go like, oh, where do you live? In the Netherlands. Oh, really? Me too. For me, since I started doing, um, getting involved with live coding, I've been really um, impressed with, uh, for example, some of the ideas about not having sort of hierarchies or headliners in events and welcoming newcomers. And so it's something I've been interested in kind of perpetuating as well of creating. I really lo like um, Alex McLean has always organized kind of live streams where anyone can just, there's a big Google doc and you can just sign up at which half hour you want to perform and if there's a hundred people participating then it lasts a hundred hours or if there's... There's an, a way or an effort or, a, or, a, or an idea of the community of trying to incorporate failure especially in a society in which failure is something that cannot happen. Everything started with the idea to start connecting the nodes of TopLab around Europe. So they came to Angar with the idea of actually internationalizing their projects, let's say. So from there the collaborative project started and on the fly was born, let's say. Like during this year they really managed to create a community of people that actually not only practice, but sometimes they're also simply interested in seeing, so like the, the performance. Uh, when we were preparing for the start of this, uh, of the on-the-fly project, uh, we were kind of bootstrapping this, this community, life coding community was pretty much non-existent in Ljubljana. There wasn't much of a scene. So we would just basically get together regularly and look at one program or one environment together. And it wasn't like a teacher and pupils, but like a bunch of us, none of us had really a good knowledge of a tool, looking together at it and it made it, I think, much more relaxed and flowing in this sense. With Ivan, you're going to interview him tomorrow. We started actually the idea of making the on-the-fly the on the project with him. So it was like a wish list about life coding, how we as performers or as we wanted to know more about life coding and have uh, like a more intense like uh, exchanges between the communities and something like that so as we started to think about how to do that and then or of about we want to we want to make some research and have the time and the money to to put the people that have these amazing ideas and and they have they will have all the time to do that and, and stuff. And also we want to, to get some public actually, you know, like 
uh, we, we don't want to, to be just like a few nerds doing stuff, but we want to share our, our things also. Yeah, so basically, yeah, it was the idea to bring to another level like the notes and, and make the live coding more visible also to a broader audience, let's say. Now we have the chance to bring even the youngest people in contact with coding. And our point is that basically coding is media literacy for the 21st century. So we actually believe that in, if people would like to make um, a bigger impact in the future, they actually need to learn how to code and how to program, because otherwise they, their roles might actually be reduced to mere consumerism. There are all these systems, algorithmic systems, timelines that we are using every day. And on school, you learn maybe once how to build something with wood or maybe do some math, but you're not, well, of course, back when I was at school, you're not getting taught how to make an algorithm. And when they do get taught to make an algorithm, it's often with the goal of making something functional instead of making something playful. And so creative coding or live coding, the goal is not to make something fun functional, it's to make something expressive and to play around with it. Live coding is, first of all, instantaneous. It comes to life in the moment. And this basically means that all kinds of things can actually go wrong. And this is what I personally uh, embrace, because um, I think that also great creative potentials can actually derive from um, those very small failures and, and things which potentially go wrong. And this is what I really appreciate. Um, and, well, I also find that basically not just live coding, but in general, Coding uh, sound and, and visuals is a very good um, way to teach coding. Because again, there is not like um, doing some math or some other problem. There's a, your, you can be, the code can work correctly or incorrectly. And here it's correct if you like what comes out and it's incorrect if you don't. tools have evolved, have, have evolved. I mean, back in 2007, we were using like Super Collider with uh, Yuli Landau, who was JITLIP to do everything. So there was not, or like what is now known as tidal cycles was still like a very much a prototype in Alex McLean's like uh, hard drive, I guess. I don't know for sure if, uh, if it was like in what state it was, but it was not the tool that it is now that is like really like this go-to live coding platform. We used Super Collider, which is um, of course very focused on sound synthesis, um, not so much um, focusing on like um, playing events or like uh, defining patterns uh, as um, as tidal cycles is. Um, and so yeah, we were like. On, on the one hand, we were really like free, and we wanted to also be really free, like um, doing this um, free improvisation noise. Um, but then we were also interested in doing like the opposite, because live coding at that point was very much this very free um, experimental like sound collages that were happening, or very conceptual. But then we were also trying to do, hey, can we like have a shared harmonic progression? Or, Let's do some beats. Uh, can we do that also? And then, of course, uh, like something like Tidal Cycles is now very much better, much more approachable for this tool. But we had them to find our own solutions uh, to do it, which is also interesting and uh, probably uh, changes also the, the result in the end because tools are always uh, changing the output or tools are always very much informing even how you think about 
the, the process or the problem or the result that you actually uh, want to achieve. When I started live coding, I was very much in the, I'd spent some time at a department that was very electroacoustically focused um, doing my masters. And I guess that was kind of like my electronic music um, world. And uh, I was very interested in experimental music and noise music, essentially. And then when I started live coding, I um, got into this phase where it was just like testing out live coding in like loads of different contexts. So it was like live coding at noise shows, live coding at, with jazz musicians, like <laughs> playing algorithms. And um, I was just like really interested in how you can kind of morph um, the forms through code, like across all those different contexts. So yeah, algorithm for me was like, hey, how do I turn noise music into something that people want to dance to. Um, so there was this like experimentation across a lot of algorithms with like, yeah, I guess going from this like very experimental noise aesthetic to, you know, like quantizing that. And then like, how do you actually get people to dance to that? And like, what adjustments do you need to make? So yeah, I really enjoyed that process actually. But Clap your hands, you know, or where do people come from? Say the country you come from. And then, you know, you can start extending the, the sound output of what you do because uh, Textual instructions that you type on the computer don't necessarily have to affect the computer or, or be interpreted by the computer, it can be interpreted by anyone reading. So you can use that uh, idea to, to really extend the, the output, the sonic output or even the conceptual output of live coding. But um, like with this specific project, the Code Club here, like I really take my hands off and it's all up to one. So, you know, she's, she's deciding what she's coding, she's deciding the algorithm and the way she's playing, it's also modifying the algorithm. At the beginning, I like to, I like to to write just maybe a line or something that starts the thing and then there's not, there's not just uh, this annoying silence for a few minutes that all, uh, sometimes happens in, in a performance in live coding. So I like to, to solve that thing first and, and then I, yeah, depend on, on, the, on the performance. And, and also I think it helps me to think because I want to think or remember a function or something like I'm, I'm, I want to run, but is uh, I have something to, to move, uh, so it helps me. So I used to perform with my guitar and I have another uh, project just using all this and, and modular synthesizers and stuff. So I like to, to use those things also when I perform with live coding. Also, like, um, I mean, Ivan and me just wrote a paper on live coding and machine learning and we were like specifically like picking out that there's like such a different ethos in those two technical spheres, which makes it really tricky to combine them. But then maybe there's something interesting in those frictions, like, you know, if you're going to like live train a model, what does your model have to look like? How do you have to um, adjust the machine learning? technology to fit within the live coding frame and if you want to like take the like full transparency uh, live coding ethos yet you're working with black boxes <laughs> like yeah it's just really tricky and we ended up with a lot of questions and not very many answers yet <laughs> so yeah yeah I think it's like I think it's definitely like a really interesting area of research right now. It's like, what, what does live machine learning look like? I just, uh, yeah. AI or um, uh, machine learning can offer to live coding. And also the other way around, because if you look at the practice within live coding practice with specific requirements, necessities, ways of doing, that also influences, for example, the develop of algorithms oriented to small data, oriented, uh, for example, to be more, uh, to have parameters that allow you actually to be more expressive. And then more specifically with Hydra, I really do work with this idea as functional programming, as representing a set of uh, pieces of code or modules that can be put together in different ways. And so it, I find them to be very related in terms of um, that you're kind of representing how an audio or a visual signal flows through a system. You can live patch things together and it's sort of this ongoing process where there's not a, like it doesn't work or it doesn't work. It kind of makes something that you're interested in expressing or it makes something that you're not interested in expressing.
And the From Scratch sessions, they are something rather unique in the field of live coding, um, as for my opinion. Basically, staring in front of a complete empty tableau and then letting the creative spirits actually act. This feeling of uh, always coming on stage with this like fresh feeling of like, this could go horribly wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's also because of the way that I live code, because I almost always start blank slate, so without any code written. Um, and it's um, a free improvisation from there. And so there's all like the possibility space is large and the possibility to fail is quite large. Um, and but I really enjoy um, that way of live coding. Probably live coding is more uh, I think you could say that you interface with the computer. Bef before I used to think you have to use text, but not anymore, you know? And, and you are having like an output that's mostly artistic and the importance is more in the process, like how you're making it, than the end result. And I also see how um, Algorave has kind of changed uh, the scene in a lot of ways as well, because when you go into a dance music context, it's very different to an experimental music context, and people expect to dance at least on some level. Like, even if they know it's a live coding show and some things can go wrong, you still expect dance music. And so I kind of see how over the 10 years, like, production values have got a bit better in uh, live coding, and I would largely put that down to Algorave and also people who are coming in maybe from more dance music backgrounds as well and bringing that aesthetic in. Um, so yeah, I feel like there's actually getting less space to <laughs> fail in live coding rather than more. Um, but yeah, maybe that's interesting as well. And in, let's say, technical stuff, coding, artistic practice, like everything, trying things that don't work is part of the research process, of every research process, but it's not reported. So I think, uh, or, or I feel that that failure is what can actually be presented, presented without any troubles within the, the life coding practice. And it's something that is, I don't know, also liberating or but life coding, I mean, what is life coding? I mean, life coding can be so many things. And I, I think that the interesting part is we don't know yet where the actual boundaries are. Mm -hmm.